One day in 2018, a high school teacher named Mark Mangiardo is driving home when he notices police sirens behind him. He's being pulled over. The cops suspect he's driving drunk. When he stops, the cops decide to give him a breathalyzer test. Of course, Mark hadn't been drinking at all, so this shouldn't be a problem. So he takes the test, and they find that he has a blood alcohol content of 0.18. In New York, where this happened, the legal limit is a 0.08. He explains to the cops that this has to be a mistake. He hadn't even had a single drink. But of course, the cops have heard this story a million times before. Mark gets a DWI. This time, he was only three weeks into a brand new job at a school. Six months later, this would happen again. With pending felony charges, the school has no choice but to let him go. And subsequently, he was struggling to get any job at all. But he wasn't lying to the cops. He lost everything, all because of a crime he legitimately didn't do. How could such a thing be possible? What if I told you there's a disease that makes you drunk without drinking? For today's video, let's take a look at auto brewery syndrome. This video is sponsored by Helix. Helix makes premium mattresses and bedding, custom fit to your needs and delivered straight to your door. Everyone sleeps differently, so Helix has you take a sleep quiz to match your body type and sleep preferences. I'm a side sleeper, so Helix set me up with a sunset mattress. Helix recently launched their newest and most high-end collection yet, the Helix Elite Mattress. They put their years of extensive mattress expertise to use to create a truly elevated sleep experience. The Helix Elite Collection includes six different mattress models to combine high-end luxury with personalized comfort tailored to your preferences. Helix delivers your mattress right to your door with free shipping in the US, comes rolled up in a box, and it's easy to set up. And to make sure you love your Helix mattress, there's a 100 nights of sleep trial. You also get a 10-year warranty, as well as financing options and flexible payment plans. Also, Helix mattresses are fiberglass free. I've been sleeping on a Helix mattress now for over two years at this point, and it's some of the best sleep I've ever gotten. And the Glaciotex upgrade that I got ensures that I stay cool when I sleep. Just go to helixsleep.com slash wang to get 20% off your Helix mattress. You'll also get two free pillows. There's this guessing game that you see people play sometimes. They had a few drinks and they're trying to figure out if enough time has passed, if they'd be good to drive right now. I'm not saying you should do this, I'm saying it happens. But imagine if you had to do that every single time you got behind the wheel, whether you'd been drinking or not. The problem for Mark actually started all the way back in 2006, long before any run-ins with the cops. In an interview with ABC7, he speaks about how at the time, he was a teacher in New Jersey. People started to complain that he smelled like alcohol, but he insisted that he would never drink at work, especially because he worked at a school. But administrators kept getting complaints, and he could tell that despite repeated denials, nobody believed him. And why would they? I mean, you can catch an alcoholic red-handed and they'll deny up and down that they've done anything. Throughout his time teaching in New Jersey, the smell wasn't his only symptom either. In an interview with Today, he described some of the symptoms. I thought that there was something wrong with me. I wasn't exactly sure what. I just thought I was tired all the time. My wife has on numerous occasions said I wasn't acting right. Of course, though, there are other more obvious reasons why he might feel this way. For example, he was working 12-hour days. How couldn't he be exhausted? And at that time, he was pushing 40. So you can expect to just not have that same energy you used to have. But the exhaustion wasn't his only symptom. And eventually, even his wife began to suspect that he was lying. I had all the signs and symptoms of drinking even before she smelled me. So, for years, she thought I was hiding drinking, and I would come home each day and I would basically be drunk, he says. I had symptoms of being intoxicated from slurring speech to balance issues, and this happened even at social events where I had not been drinking. But at this point, these things weren't happening as often as they eventually would. It was in 2012 that these symptoms began to really ramp up. He found himself speaking to administrators about his suspected alcoholism all the time and he realized that he couldn't stay there. By no fault of his own, his reputation had been ruined. So he would leave to a different school district in upstate New York. Now he was working as an athletic director. Just three weeks into this new job, he's pulled over by the cops. And it wasn't even that he was driving erratically or anything like that. Basically what had happened was a car was reported for littering out the window on the road, and Mark's car just happened to resemble that car. Just a sheer stupid coincidence. Although it's not mentioned in any of the interviews he's done, I think it's likely that when the cops pulled him over for this, they, like a lot of his co-workers, probably smelled alcohol on him. And that's probably what prompted them to give him the breathalyzer leading to this first DWI. 
And at this point, the school was actually willing to overlook it. The superintendent said, You've done such a great job within the first three weeks of being an athletic director that we actually are willing to move past it. But six months later, it all happens again. This time he's pulled over and it's his own fault. They caught him on his phone while he's driving. Once again, they give him a breathalyzer test and once again he fails it. No matter how good he is at his job, the school can only look the other way so much. So he's placed on leave for the remainder of the school year and they don't renew his contract. He tells ABC what happened next. That's when I lost everything. I lost everything that somebody could lose, he said. I had to sell my house. I had to sell my car. I couldn't get a job in education. I couldn't get a job at a grocery store. I had pending felony charges. You know, I was facing prison time for two DWIs when I had not been drinking. With his whole life falling apart and people around him suspecting that he's an alcoholic who's lying, it was actually his mother who cracked the case. All she did was think to Google if it's possible for someone's body to make alcohol itself, and it turns out it is. It's a condition known as auto brewery syndrome. It's first identified in Japan in the 1970s. It's an exceptionally rare condition with less than 100 documented cases worldwide. Basically what happens is you get this bacteria or fungi in your gut. Then when you eat carbohydrates, these colonies in your gut cause them to ferment, creating alcohol. And now that this alcohol is in your body, it must be digested, so your body makes itself drunk. Apparently, there's also a similar condition in which this process happens in your bladder. I can only imagine that this is how they make Keystone Light. There's a wide variety of risk factors that can increase your chances of getting this. It's been connected to Crohn's disease and diabetes and some other conditions. But it seems to most often come as the result of treatment with antibiotics. You know, we take antibiotics to kill off a bacterial infection, but it doesn't just kill the bad bacteria. It'll also kill off some of the good bacteria in our bodies that keeps these other things in check. And in some people's bodies, when this good bacteria is killed off, it allows all these other things to run rampant. Such was the case of a man named Donato Gianotto, whose story made the news several years before Marx. After having what should have been a very simple procedure on his nose, Donato began to experience symptoms very similar to Marx, notably exhaustion and slurred speech. Then one night after dinner, he would suffer from a seizure. When his wife Michelle brought him to the hospital, she was told that he was experiencing alcohol withdrawal, which made no sense because he hadn't had a single drink in years. So with no idea what was going on, Genoto's wife was left to hopelessly watch him fall apart after what should have been a very simple routine procedure. They struggled with this for nearly two years until a cousin who was a doctor suggested auto brewery syndrome. They tested him for it and sure enough the cousin's suspicion was correct. So here's how the test works. Basically, they'll monitor your blood alcohol levels as they feed you more and more non-alcoholic carbs. If that level increases, you have auto brewery syndrome. Michelle noted her observations when speaking to New York One. He would not show symptoms until it went a little bit higher. So my theory is that he was brewing alcohol for so long that he was becoming tolerant. But the condition was so rare that even though they had diagnosed it, they had no idea how to treat it. His condition kept worsening and he kept having more seizures. She described a moment of desperation to CBC Radio. I called my husband's endocrinologist crying one day and begged for help. And I said, Please find me a doctor. He's going to die. I don't want to bury him. The endocrinologist said, Let me make some phone calls. I'll call you back, she said. Eventually, the endocrinologist referred her to a doctor in Staten Island, Dr. Prasanna Wikremasinghe. Although at that point he had never had a patient with the condition, he had heard of it and was interested in studying it. The doctor collected samples from Donato to determine which microbes were causing his condition. He then prescribed antifungal medicine to kill them off. This treatment, combined with a no-carb diet and probiotics, would help restore the gut's natural levels and effectively end the auto brewery syndrome. Unfortunately, Donato would ultimately pass away in 2020, but his wife Michelle would continue to provide help for people dealing with this very rare condition. Since Donato's treatment, Dr. Wikrema Singha would go on to become one of the world's leading experts in this condition, treating over 30 patients, including Mark Mangiardo. And it was with the doctor's treatment that Mark would finally begin to get his life back although it wasn't without its challenges. I come from an Italian-American family. I haven't had pasta or pizza or anything like that since I was diagnosed in May 2019. It was extremely challenging in the beginning. Of course, it is possible for some people to eventually return to a completely normal diet, as was the case with a North Carolina man who, like Mark, got a DWI because of the auto brewery syndrome, but now says he eats pizza and pasta with no problem. 
But the doctor warned that sometimes people will relapse after another antibiotic treatment or some kind of other trigger event. And it can also have much more serious health implications. There's the case of Sarah Lefevre of Connecticut. Sarah had been dealing with the condition for at least 15 years without having any idea what was going on with her. The seriousness of it wasn't realized until her 23rd birthday. It was extremely cold outside and her friend dropped her off at home. Before she could get inside her house, she passed out in the cold. She had had some drinks that night, but nowhere near enough to cause this to happen. And throughout the years, she would often pass out like this, on some occasions breaking bones. The diagnosis didn't occur until she was already suffering from liver failure more than a decade later. She needed a liver transplant, but at the same time, they couldn't give her a liver transplant until his condition was controlled. And the conventional antifungal treatments weren't working for her. Although there were glimmers of hope with more powerful antifungal treatments, it was too little too late, and Sarah would eventually pass in July of 2023. All because her condition went untreated for so long, because it's a thing that people don't even think could happen. And if you do think of it, it's the thing that sounds like you're an alcoholic and you're lying. And one of the concerns raised by Dr. Wikramasinghe is it being believed in courts. Although Mark's DWIs were thrown out due to prosecutors not prosecuting him in time, and there are cases for autobrewery syndrome being accepted in court, such as the case of a woman charged with a DWI in upstate New York, there's also been cases where the judge rejected the diagnosis and gave out jail time. This happened to two of the doctor's patients, one in Indiana who was given six months of jail time, and another in Ohio who was given two years. All that being said, if anything I'm describing in this video sounds familiar to you, it's probably worth looking into. I suspect that this condition is far more common than people realize. Because like I just said, it's not something that even occurs to people. And also it seems like a lot of the patients who get the diagnosis are geographically close to the one guy that's an expert on it. So there's probably been some people with the condition who went to doctors who just didn't know about it. But in any case, that's all for now. If you like this video, turn on notifications and check out my video about the guy who got plastic surgery to look like David Beckham and looks nothing like David Beckham. I'm out.